Dr. David Schubert, who is a professor and laboratory head of Cellular Neurobiology Laboratory at the Salk Institute for Biological Studies, the website for the Salk Institute, of course, salk, S-A-L-K dot E-D-U. And uh, Dr. Schubert, welcome to the program. Dr. Schubert? Yes? Hey, welcome to the program. We're on the air. Hey, thank you. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I understand that recently the, um, uh, the was it the World Organization has concluded that uh, the ingredient in Roundup glyphosate uh, could be a carcinogen? That is correct, yes. What, what led to that conclusion, and what does that mean for all of us? Well, I think we really don't know the data from which you know, this conclusion was based because the, the actual text and all of the assays that, the assays that they um, looked at were not, have not been published yet. But uh, what they did is they looked at the evidence from human exposure, um, some animal studies, some studies in uh, more simple systems, and they concluded that Roundup is um, a potential uh, carcinogen. Now, Monsanto is fighting this worldwide, are they not? Pardon? And Monsanto is pushing back on this, I believe. Yes, quite hard. And because okay. because it's a, it, this is a multi-billion dollar business to them, I assume. That's right. So if, if glyphosate or, or Roundup is a carcinogen or a potential carcinogen, a, a moderate carcinogen, um, should we be worried about this? Are we getting enough to concern ourselves? I think that's the problem. The, you know, the herbicides have been herbicide formulations with uh, glyphosate, if glyphosate in them have been around for quite a while. And the problem is, since the introduction of the genetically modified, uh, primarily soy and corn, which um, you know requires a lot of this herbicide in order to make it efficient for the farmers, the amount that uh, has been uh, in the environment and the amount that humans are exposed to has gone up enormously in the last uh, 20 years. So, initially, the the before the introduction of the GM crops, it was not very um, there was not a high level of human exposure because the plants themselves were not exposed to the plant to the to the herbicides. Right. But there, during the last 20 years, there's been a fundamental shift in agriculture in the United States and around the world in the sense that the, the a lot of the um, chemicals that used to be just sprayed around the plants and on the plants, like insecticides, it, then they could wash them off. But right. Now, with the introduction of GM plants, the, these um, uh, products get inside the plant, and so the human exposure is much greater. And right. the, the amount of glyphosate you know, in use has gone up like 14-fold in the last 20 years. So it's enormous wow. exposure to humans. That's a I think that's the problem. A 1,400% increase. 14. 14. 14 fold. 14-fold, 14 14 14 yeah. 1,400%. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, okay, which raises a couple of interesting questions. We have seen an explosion or an increase, let's say. I, I don't have the statistics in front of me, but a, a real significant in increase in the number of people who, are, who appear to be uh, intolerant of, uh, of, of the primary protein in wheat, uh, gluten. And just in the last year or so, uh, my understanding is, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but uh, 10, 15 years ago, in order to uh, increase the ability to harvest wheat with these uh, giant threshing machines by just a few percent, actually, um, they used to you know, basically cut off the wheat heads when the wheat was green, and it would gum up the machine. So now they spray Roundup over the wheat three days before they harvest it so that the entire plant is dead and brittle, so that when they when the threshing machines go over and pop the wheat, they pop off more easily, and it's a, it's more efficient, and that in that increased efficiency pays for the cost of the Roundup, and there are some who are speculating that that means that there's all kinds of Roundup in wheat, and it might be the people who think that they're intolerant to to uh, intolerant to the combination of gluten and and Roundup being in their system. Do you know anything about that? Well, that's a perfectly valid argument. This is something that most people don't realize in the sense that people have some idea about, you know, genetically modified plants and they require the 
being sprayed with uh, glyphosate herbicides in order to make them uh, you know, do their thing, so to speak. But most people don't realize that, that the same compound is used as a drying agent and it speeds up the harvesting of crops. So you can have a non-GM plant, which is, I mean, for example, a wheat. I don't think there's any GM wheat in the United States that you know is is loaded with this particular chemical. So the chemical itself, um, it's a matter of like all things, it's a matter of exposure. So, and exposure in combination with other chemicals or other um, like proteins in the case of you were talking about. So, um, no, it's quite a real possibility. There's a lot of increase in a lot of different diseases. And it's very difficult to pin it down to one cause, but you know, this is certainly a possibility. We're talking with Dr. David Schubert of the Salk Institute for Biological Studies, the, a professor and head of the uh, laboratory, uh, laboratory head of the cellular neurobiology laboratory there. Uh, we had a, a, a scientist on this program, uh, although this is not her particular area of science. She's written some interesting and, and said some fairly thought-provoking things on this topic, who suggested that while... Well, glyphosate, while, while Roundup, is an herbicide, that is, it kills plants, not animals, as opposed to like an insecticide that kills insects, um, and therefore is theoretically not harmful to humans, because we're not herbs, we're animals, we're not plants, we're animals, a different kingdom, that it interrupts a particular metabolic pathway uh, relatively unique to plants, but it's not totally unique to plants. It's a metabolic pathway that is also fairly ubiquitous in bacteria. And that the, this glyphosate or Roundup getting into our guts might be really seriously messing with our gut bacteria, and that may account for this explosion of IBS, uh, the, uh, of you know irritable bowel syndrome, uh, and all these other things that you constantly see ads, ads on TV for. You know, here, take this. You know, it'll make you feel better. Um, any research on that? Do you know anything about that? Is that well, that's, is, yes? That's certainly a major problem because. The assumption is when you make a drug, so I'm in the, um, our lab works on drug discovery for neurodegenerative disease, and so anybody that makes a drug, you design a drug to, for one target, but you always have these so-called off-target effects. So that while the glyphosate was designed to affect the uh, uh, plant enzyme, it was certainly has other effects, and that's what people, people are picking up. And the gut bacteria, it's known that they I mean, they're, the gut bacteria have the same enzyme as plants, some of them. So the glyphosate definitely kills uh, some populations of gut bacteria. So could, this could be a problem. And it also has a lot of other effects. Uh, people, you can't predict these things until you do some studies. And yeah. the last uh, 10 years or so, there have been, a, from my perspective, a large number of studies showing that uh, this particular chemical can have some really you know, nasty effects. And since it's an endocrine disruptor, it you know it can potentiate you know tumor growth. It has a lot of things that are you know what we would consider in the drug world is off-target effects, and they were not necessarily predictable. Right. But um, you know they. But they're real. They're yeah. real. Do- and- Dr. Schubert, we have only about a, a little more than a half a minute left. Um, what can we do about this? What is being done about this? I don't know what's being done, but hopefully. The, um, I think you can eliminate the, the product, but I think you can cut it back. You don't. It's not necessary um, to have the GM plants. You're really not getting that much with these, and that's the driving force for the human exposure. So, uh-huh. I think going back to the way agriculture was done 20 years ago is not going to cause that much harm. Right. Just back off on the GMOs. Just back back off on the major contributor to the driving. Uh, the Fascinating stuff. Dr. David Schubert of the Salk Institute, salk.edu. Thank you so much, for, sir, for dropping okay. by today. All right, thank you. Great talking to you.